My name is Dan Franciscus. Um, I work my full-time jobs at the Institute for Advanced Study. And a lot of people ask, what is that? It's a very odd name. So uh, it's an institute where we do advanced study. That's what it actually is. Um, no, just kidding. Uh, we actually, um, it's right next to Princeton University in New Jersey. And um, we basically bring around scholars from around the world, and they do whatever research they want to do. Uh, we provide the resources, and our, <clears throat> our idea behind this uh, is to give scholars a, uh, a platform to you know, think and learn on their own, and uh, that's what we do. So they kind of have free range to do what they want, and we provide resources for them. Uh, the technologies that I use, um, Windows, PowerShell, Puppet, VMware, and Chocolaty, um, use those a lot at work, and I actually write about them a lot, too. Um, as Paul said, for SysOps and Tech Target and IP Switch. Um, and actually, I actually have an article coming out for Code Magazine soon on Chocolaty that we publish in the next couple of weeks. So I did a lot of writing um, on Chocolaty. So I am not a Microsoft MVP, so I'm kind of up in the air in terms of if you'd actually listen to me, listen to me and do what I say. You probably shouldn't. Um, if anyone wants to contact me, my Twitter, GitHub, email is right there. So Chocolatey Fest, this is actually uh, really cool. Uh, a one-day event for one big tool, right? It's a tool that we all love. Um, and can anybody think of a one-day event where we focused on one tool recently? Anybody? No? What's that? <laughs> yeah. That was the one-day event. And if, uh, I apologize if anyone's offended. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be offensive. And if you are, you can blame these people, because they voted for it on Twitter. 64 to uh, 36, so. Their fault. So did I really complete automate? Not exactly. All right, I'm not a magician. But I did automate the majority of things that we do. And um, what I'm talking about today is not actually really DevOps. It's managing our Windows workstations and desktops. Um, so our, our institute um, environment prior to Chocolate, this is you know, when I first started there, they were really um, behind. It's predominantly Linux, a lot of Mac. Our Windows um, footprint's fairly small. So we were deploying um, our initial OSs with like Norton Ghost, which is a terrible product if anybody's ever used it. Um, we, we did patching uh, with a product called Dimension. And um, it actually did a fairly good job of patching. The biggest issue, though, was you couldn't really, uh, for one, you couldn't easily push out packages and patch them that weren't in their scope of software that they supported. So they did Firefox and Chrome and all the other stuff that's you know, fairly common. But we had, a, you know, at the an educational institution, you have a lot of third-party products that people use, a lot of free stuff that we just couldn't do easily. And um, you know, there wasn't much PowerShell there, wasn't much automation. We were actually using PS Exec to deploy software and patching, which was you know, obviously a little bit of a headache. And that was pretty much it. So we were a pretty archaic Windows environment at that point. So obviously, Chocolate is not just for DevOps, right? It's for anything Windows related, anything that's running Windows, in my opinion. Um, and so really what I wanted to do was automate the desktop software and kind of get that out of my hair so I could focus on other things. So let's talk about Windows software. We all know it's time consuming, right? Um, we use, uh, I guess, hundreds of third-party apps. Um, you know, software is error-prone on Windows. It's manual. It sucks, and I don't want to do it, the most important point. I wanted to get away from it, do other things that weren't associated with this. So as much as I could automate in the background, the better. So my hopes and dreams. Um, obviously, I wanted to automate the initial deployment of software on our new machines. Um, in addition to that, obviously upgrading the software when new versions are released, enable end users to install software on their own without having to call the help desk or anyone else, and very, very rarely, again, do anything myself. So removing that manual intervention um, you know, that 10 years ago we were doing quite a lot of. So my introduction to Chocolaty. And I think it'd be pretty cool to, to talk, tell you about how I kind of came about it. So I was actually creating a reference image in Ghost. 
And um, <clears throat> at the time, there was um, a lot of third-party apps that I had to install. And uh, I had this huge list that you know, the prior sysadmin gave me, and he said, you, we put these all in the image. I'm like, OK, I'm going to be here for days installing this stuff. And uh, so I just Googled, you know, install Windows software with PowerShell so I could automate this process. And Chocolatey was one of the things that came up. And um, it was, I think it was actually before they really started giving professional licenses and stuff. So it was just an open source version. So I thought it was really awesome. Obviously, I think most people in here would agree. Um, so I did a demo with Rob. And um, you know, obviously, the guy who created Chocolatey. I thought it was really interesting, too, because at, the, at that time, I was kind of naive to how small it was. Um, I saw this great product, and I was like, they must have a pretty good team. You know, I'm probably going to have a you know, demo with a sales engineer or someone who's going to you know, be you know, not the founder of the company. Uh, so it was, it was pretty cool. Um, but Rob was, you know, obviously, if anyone's met him, he's a really cool guy, really down to earth. Um, so we took the time out of his day to uh, do the demo. And it wasn't you know, not like we have a huge environment, so it wasn't a huge sale for him. And so we um, obviously used open source for a while. And then we eventually purchased the business license, which I think is really, really beneficial. It'll automate a lot of the things that open source, without reinventing the wheel, will do for you. So Chocolatey, right? It's awesome. It's CLI. It's built in PowerShell. You can automate a lot of stuff with it. Integrates with Puppet and Chef and Salt and Ansible. Has great auditing and some, a lot of other features that are great. But the one thing that really hung me up, and I'm not sure if anyone else felt the same way when they first started using it, is that he doesn't want you to use the community packages directly, right? Um, for a lot of different reasons, security or distribution rights and whatnot. And I realized I had a typo there, so disregard that. <laughs> so. Um, the implementation tasks uh, that we kind of went through, we took all of our existing installers and we created packages from them. Um, that's really simple to do. There's a script on chocolate.org that does it for you. Um, we created our internal repos, <coughs> which was fairly simple to set up as well. We created an internalization process. We want to take all these great community uh, packages and internalize those so we can push them out internally. Um, and that's really worked out really beneficial. That was really the most important piece of the whole thing is that so we can leverage that without having to create packages ourselves, at least not often. Um, and from there, we actually just reinstalled Chocolatey on our clients, reinstalled software that we could then manage with Chocolatey. Microsoft Deployment Toolkit is what we use for um, initial deployments now. So we converted all of those to Chocolatey applications. Um, if anyone uses that, it's actually fairly simple because you can just do a command line, and now your your package in MDT is using Chocolatey instead of um, you know MSI or an EXE. And then another important process was um, upgrading software and workstations with PowerShell. So um, you know we're fairly small, so we don't have SCCM or anything kind of robust. Uh, so really, we just use PowerShell and Chocolatey to upgrade all of our machines that are uh, using Windows. So uh, this is actually the script right from the website. Um, if anyone uh, wants to use this at some point, that's the uh, URL. And it really just, you can point um, Chocolate to a folder, and it'll go through and create packages from everything in that folder. Um, that's similar to what we use when we actually built our packages. Um, and you're kind of up and running, and now you can use those packages on your clients. So when we created internal repos, um, I used Puppet for this. There's, um, there's a really good uh, Puppet module that Chocolatey created that does most of the work for you. So you have an IES server up and running uh, through Puppet, but um, most of the configuration that you're going to want to do is done. And um, the only other things we did outside of that were um, you know, SSL certificate we installed and things like that. <coughs> um, one of the th cool things we actually did too is we, I'm not sure if anyone's used a simple server, but there's, uh, by default, there's a packages folder um, on the server. So we actually used a virtual directory to put that on a SIF share so it's, the actual packages are completely separate from the server. So we have to reinstall it or upgrade it or just create new ones. It's very simple to do. And then what we do is mainly we have uh, one repo with internalized packages from the community, 
and one for license packages that we created ourselves uh, that we can use for our Windows machines. <clears throat> so um, internalized and community packages. Um, so what I did, and it's a probably a really simple way to do it, we set up one test machine that has all of the community packages installed on it. Um, so it's quite a few, but it works fairly well. Um, and I created a PowerShell script that basically um, it runs several times a day. It looks for community packages that are up updated. Um, it downloads those, internalizes them, tries to install them to make sure it installs correctly, and then pushes to our internal repo. Emails us the results so we know what's going on. This is kind of a high-level view of what happens. So Chaco outdated. Obviously, it's going to see what packages are on the community repo that it needs to download. Um, internalizes them, upgrades, and then pushes if all goes well. And this is the internalizer kind of in action here. Um, this is a fairly old version, so it's not exactly the same. But you can see it's uh, curl. There's a new version of that. It starts to download it, uh, upgrades, well, actually recompiles, upgrades, installs, pushes to our repo. And this is just one PowerShell, PowerShell script that does it. And it's actually on GitHub if everyone wants, anyone wants to take a look at it. So again, we use Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Um, <clears throat> and again, we, all we did was really convert these applications that we were using before to Chocolatey. Um, and uh, you could obviously have specific versions of applications, uh, which was in, before really a pain. If there was a new version of Firefox or you want to have different versions, you have to you know, do some funky stuff in MDT, which is uh, not really what we wanted to do. And this is actually straight from my blog. I made a blog post about a year and a half ago on how to do this. And it's basically uh, just looking at your internal repo um, and then going through each package and then creating an MDT application from that. So you could have all of your um, internal repos, I'm sorry, uh, all of your yeah, internal applications now on MDT with one script. So our automated upgrade process, fairly simple as well. So obviously a new community package is released. Uh, we internalize it on our test client, do an install, push to our repo. And then one of the things that I started to do, normally we actually just upgrade packages on the weekends uh, when people aren't using their machines, when they're not going to reboot, because people get really upset about that for some reason. Um, so specific packages, say Chrome, Firefox, things that have are prone to security issues that we want to push out. We actually will schedule it that night through our PowerShell script and then run it um, through a scheduled task. And this is kind of just illustrating that. Um, so yeah, really, the whole process is just PowerShell, Chocolatey, and a task schedule on Windows. And we could do quite a lot with it, to be honest. Um, this is some of the things that the upgrade script does. So um, a really cool thing that I found recently, um, at PowerShell Summit, I met um, a guy named Mark Kellerman. And he just released, and there's other versions of this prior to this, but invoke command as on GitHub. And it allows you to basically do PowerShell remoting, but use the system account, which I like to use for installing packages. Um, now, it's not really, it's doing remoting, but it's actually just creating a scheduled task on your remote computers that runs, um, that solves a lot of issues. One means you can use your system account, and then it actually will solve if you have double hop issues as well, um, so you don't run into that. This runs on all of our workstations simultaneously. Obviously, if you have a large scale, that might not be the best case, but for us, it works fine. Um, in the script, we can exclude and include packages, so uh, if there's specific packages that we want to push out that aren't already on our machines. Uh, we can put those on. If we want to exclude certain packages that we don't want to upgrade, we can do that as well. Um, one of the things that we do, too, is we have, a, again, a protected repository, and we have a community you know, uh, internalized repository. Um, 
<clears throat> so our protected one we don't actually have on our clients by default as a source repository. So during this script, um, it'll actually add that in case there are packages that we want to upgrade and then remove it so when it's done, the, you know, those machines don't have access to that source anymore. Um, pending, re pending reboot is a really good module that the community created uh, that basically just does a test on your machine to see if the reboot is necessary. It's just a Boolean, so it's true or false. Then it actually will give you um, what's causing the reboot if you want to see that too. We log all the output really just locally on the machine if we want to look at that in the future. And um, it emails us the results so we can see after each run uh, if there's any issues with packages failing to install, um, how many machines you know, it occurred on. I actually do, um, also I didn't include this, but we, I, we do a um, wake on LAN to wake machines up if they're off. Um, and it's just, again, emails us the results so we're aware of what's happening. The self-service, we haven't actually used yet. I've been kind of putting it off for a little while, but we're going to use Chocolatey GUI. Um, and um, you know, it'll leverage our unprotected repo, community repos that are free software that uh, we don't mind if people install themselves. And uh, for now, for our protected repo, um, or actually, no, I'm sorry. Now, right now, our help desk actually just uses a PowerShell GUI I created that will allow them to you know, do remote installs on demand. Um, but something I kind of want to get away from eventually. So again, the whole, the whole idea around this was to not intervene, to let this happen in the background so I could focus on other things. Um, so when I intervene, obviously when something breaks, you have to kind of get involved. Um, one of the things I run into a lot is certain packages that you try to internalize will fail. Um, so that's kind of annoying, but you, you know, I usually kind of get Rob involved if it's something he could fix. Um, like for Fire, Firefox was one that didn't internalize correctly for a while, and um, he kind of fixed that, which was great. Um, obviously, if any packages fail to upgrade, we have to get involved. And um, if we're creating uh, non-community packages ourselves, uh, like Microsoft Office or things like that, and we have all of our, um, you know, everything that's going on in the background is alerted to us via email. So to summaries, uh, summarize, Chocolatey can be used with anything, not just DevOps. Uh, I don't work in DevOps, to be honest, and it's been great for me. Uh, PowerShell and Chocolatey, you pretty much automate everything with. Um, there's other systems that can do it, you know, more bells and whistles, but I, for our purposes, it's been great, and um, very happy with how it's been going so far. MDT, very in, easy to integrate with Chocolatey. Uh, just command line, and you can have your packages uh, on your on your initial OSs very easily. And then upgraded packages again, we just use PowerShell, uh, but practically anything can do it. SCCM or anything that can do a command line uh, can upgrade stuff and install packages. So that's it. Any questions? Um, there's no technical, um, yeah, it's, a, um, it's, it's something that Rob pushes. It, it makes sense. Uh, he knows a little bit more of the details, but obviously, you know, for the most part, you don't want your clients reaching out to the internet to install packages. Um, technically, I think legally, I'm not sure if you could do it or not, uh, based on distribution rights. Uh, that was probably the, the bigger issue there. He knows a little bit more details, but um, yeah, so... At first, it was one of those things I really wanted to do because it just makes it a lot easier, to be honest. But internalizing, you know, you take those installers, you embed them into the package, which is nice, so you don't have to reach out to the internet. You can do some more testing on it and things like that, so. Any more questions? Okay. Cool. Thank you.